You don't have to do this, man. <sighs> yes, I do. It might give me some closure. Oh, just take off your jersey. Don't get hair all over it. That's probably fair. Oh my god, I can't watch this. Shopping bag deployed. Razor on. Ugh. I'm still keeping mine. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Dude. What if I just kept it like this? You're right. This really seems like the sort of thing I should be doing in a mirror. <sighs> Damn. Last LFR of the season. Let's make it a good one. Leafs lose 2-1 in overtime to the Washington Capitals and they drop their first round series in six games. Why, why isn't there a stereotypical movie high school behind me? It was supposed to... Oh, well. Everyone left me hanging! Uh, ah! Okay, overall, I am happy, but I need to get some frustration out. Damn it! They lost to the Washington Capitals, and I didn't want them to lose to the Washington Capitals! Five out of the six games went to overtime, a bounce here, a bounce there, and damn it, they could have won the whole series, and then they take on Pittsburgh, and who knows, they played them pretty well all season, and if they beat them, who the hell knows? Look at the East, look at the West, the whole thing is wide open. What if the Leafs went through last to the Stanley Cup? movies and I wanted one this year why didn't we get it now having said that and taking a breath let's look at this game and then let's look at this season first and foremost I got to host the festivities in Maple Leaf Square and to show you how jacked up the fans were here they were before game six in the league. Don't let anybody ever tell you anything different and if they chirp at you, don't chirp back because you can't chirp the truth. And then I got a text from Mrs. Dangle earlier in the day. Hey, found a pair of tickets. And I said, ooh. And then I realized, no, 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 no. She found a pair of tickets for sale. And I said, ooh. You ever see the price of something and you just go, damn it. Ah, I'm gonna buy that. And then we did. And then we did! So, second game of the playoffs for this series, and I got to go to it. I tell you what, for Maple Leaf Square, game three, I got to go to that game, and I was nervous as hell. Game four, still got to host the stuff in Maple Leaf Square, not nervous at all, and I didn't get to go to the game, Leafs lost. Game six, I got tickets and I'm ready to barf. I think we're gonna win this game! Martino Ortiz Luis out there singing the anthem, and the Air Canada Center. Canada! Singing it with her! And here's why I like having one consistent voice for the anthems and how I know that I watch a lot of Leafs games. At the end, I, I have to sing it like her. I can't just go, for the... You gotta throw on the little for... And then you go up. I can't do it, but you go up. And then if you can, you, you, you do that singing thing. Look, the Leafs didn't survive the series and neither did my voice, okay? I've said it before and I'll say it again. The Leafs are all about the future. They're all about the next... 100 years in their centennial and what better person to sing than a high school student? I don't want to feel old or sound old, but the last time the Leafs made the playoffs in a full season in 2004, I was her age! And it's not about ignoring the past either. I've got the chance to talk to a number of Leafs alumni over the years and the guys, the older they get, Daryl Sittler, Tiger Williams, I have not seen them with this kind of energy ever, as long as I've been working. Wendell Clark too, like I don't think these guys want to be associated with a brand that sucks and for a long time the Leafs have sucked. These guys who generated memories over the years that we remember and look back on fondly, they don't have to look back on their own time anymore. They're invigorated by this young group. Old, young, doesn't matter. Good is good and the Leafs killed it this year. I, did, I said I would talk about the game. First period, second period, no scoring, but holy crap what a game. Leafs outshot the cap significantly at times. Holtby faced more saves, but I think Frederick Anderson had to come up even bigger, making more important saves. Jake Gardner hit the damn puck. Ovechkin basically gave Kadri the F5. Kadri hitting Williams. After the criticism from last game, Mitch was dancing. And goals are fun. Goals are what made the loudest pop in this game, but true hockey fans, they don't need any of this crap of, oh, goal scoring needs to increase. If you can't respect a good goalie duel like this one, I maybe the sport's not for you, man. How about lacrosse? They still have a stick. They still try to murder each other with it, and there's way more goals. So, 
we will fast forward to the third. Now you knew it was going to be a bounce. It was just going to be something weird. Every time the Leafs shot the puck down the ice and it went right into Braden Holtby's stick, I was like, oh! Partly because I think it's funny, also because you never know! And then at some point, either earlier in the third or at some point late in the second, someone, I think it was on the caps, rang the puck around the boards and it took a funny hop off the stanchion. And it didn't bounce in front of the net, it just took a funny hop. And I remember being like, oh, I'm Imagine Morgan Riley in the neutral zone flings it into the cap zone along the glass and Tink oh my god it's in front of the net oh my god it's that awesome yeah! one of the loudest pops I have ever heard at the Air Canada Center Austin Matthews all alone in front with the puck on his stick basically puts it on an 85 degree angle the puck takes flight and goes over Braden Holby and in one nothing leaks we are about 12 minutes away from game seven this kid this freaking kid scores four goals in his first NHL game but that's just a regular season game man these are the playoffs and in game six he hits him with the four that's his fourth of the series he was flying all night getting good shots all night the caps were scared to death of him all night and then he hits him anyway. As a Leafs fan there were times where I'm like I'm not sure what a premier player in this league is. I would look at players on other teams and assume it was that. Austin Matthews is a premier player in this league and he's a Leaf. He is a Leaf! Austin Matthews is a Leaf! How many months into this are we? Seriously we're 88 games into Austin Matthews NHL career. 82 in the regular season then another six in the playoffs. I still have to remind myself he's on our team. Ooh, the game, the game. About five minutes later, just over seven minutes left to play, Lars Zeller gives it to Marcus Johansson. Kasperi Kapanen swings at the puck with his stick and just misses. Johansson finds the teeniest, tiniest hole in Frederick Anderson's armor and it just squeaks through and crosses the line by that much. And Freddy reaches behind, he almost <laughs> And for the surprising amount of Capitals fans in Toronto, in Maple Leaf Square, and in the ACC, I, you could hear a pin drop in the ACC. No one even reacted to the goal. But here we are, it's tied. Leafs get their fair share of the chances. I thought the Capitals kind of dominated towards the end of the third, but there's no score. So we head to overtime. And that trend kind of continued because the shots were 5-1 to one in OT. And when that happens... You're not going to have a good time. Six and a half minutes into OT. Nikita Zaitsev doesn't pick up Justin Williams in time. Martin Marinson loses a net front battle with Marcus Johansson. He gets a shot. It was a good season. And like that, the Leaf season was done. I wanted them to win. A lot of people after the game were like, hey, you know what? There's no shame. And they're absolutely right. But... I wanted to win! This series, this season, was a moral victory, but to go back to a theme, maybe there is no such thing as a moral victory in the playoffs. Or rather, there is such thing as a moral victory, it just doesn't count towards getting you into the second round. The Washington Capitals, the President's Trophy winners, I think we call them that too often. We call them that too often. Who gives a damn if they won the President's Trophy in the regular season? This isn't the regular season. This is the playoffs. It's like making the NHL. Whether you're drafted first overall, you're the last pick of the draft, or you're completely undrafted altogether. It ultimately doesn't matter when you hit training camp. You might have certain advantages over the other, but ultimately, it's your own work, your own effort that gets you further. Six games. Six one goal games, five overtimes, plus one that was double, so six overtimes, and ultimately two stinking goals. That is all that separates the Toronto Maple Leafs, the rookie-laden Toronto Maple Leafs, from the Washington Capitals. And the Leafs earned a lot of respect in these playoffs, but it wasn't just respect. Sometimes there's the high-voiced, hey, you know, they did pretty good. Mm -mm, no one in the league feels that way. It's ho. Oh, the Leafs are good, and they're going to be great. And like I said in previous videos, this series, this opponent, was everything I wanted for this young team. Put them through the ringer. The Leafs are not here to have some self-serving series against the Ottawa Senators. They're not here to slay the dragon against the Boston Bruins. We want the best. The Leafs aren't trying to win bronze. They're going for gold. In all series long, everyone's been talking about, oh, the Leafs gave the Capitals everything they could handle. 
And that's true. But the Capitals gave the Leafs everything they could handle and more, which is what I wanted. If you want to become the best runner in the world, you got to lose a few races. You want to bench a certain amount, squat a certain amount, you got to fail at your goal a few times. Hell, if you want to learn a math equation, you better be ready to get it wrong a few times. Nobody likes losing, but the experience gained during it allows you to win in the future, which may make you wonder why weren't the Leafs good sooner? Haha. <laughs> but this group, this whole damn group, man, we don't know who's all going to be back. There's a few RFAs, there's a few UFAs. We don't know who's going to the World Cup. We don't know who was hurt. Apparently Nikita Zaitsev played with a concussion. I don't think I'm down with that, but how can you not be proud of every rookie and vet on this damn roster? I was a little worried about Freddie Anderson and that five-year deal. No more. I didn't think Austin Matthews would score that much. I thought he was going to be a little bit more like Anze Kopitar. I think Anze Kopitar wishes he was Austin Matthews. William Nylander got better and better as the season moved on. Will he become a center next season? We don't know, but if he does, he might become an even more valuable player to this team. Mitch Marner is going to, oh my god, destroy teams in the future. Forget being in the highlights for losing the game. Defenders are going to be terrified that Mitch Marner doesn't put him on the highlight reels for the next 10 years. And we just talked about the big Big three rookies, how about this? How awesome is it having a rookie with more even strength goals than O.V., Simmons, Sagan, Hoffman, and Kessel? That's Connor Brown, by the way! The afterthought, the other kid, the guy who I wasn't even sure would make the team this season, I thought he might be the 12th or 13th forward, had over 20 goals as a rookie. Half of that season being on the shutdown line. Speaking of which, Kadri! A career best in goal scoring, a premier pest in this league, and I don't care because he's ours. Leo Komarov, one of the leaders, arguably the leader of this team, was pesky all season long and he really picked up the goal scoring as the season continued. Which by the way, I haven't been able to find a replay of the Komarov Schmidt hit. It looked like an accident. I'm not sure, but I only saw it live and the one time. Zach Hyman, I know a lot of you are down on him, but there is no way that kid's not going to get better. You can't say, damn it, I wish that kid would have finished his chances and oh, we should have kept Michael Grabner in the same sentence. James Van Riemsdyk, just proving that he's James Van Riemsdyk, but Tyler Bozak proving that he's even more valuable to this team than we ever thought. Hey, maybe I shouldn't say we, maybe you knew the whole time. I, I'm i convinced now. And both of those guys, who knows if they'll be on the team next season. Ben Smith, I thought, performed valiantly in a position that he didn't necessarily ask to be in. Goes down with injury, comes back out of necessity, and people are still yelling at him, and he's like, I know my finger hurts! Brian Boyle comes in, oh my god, you bus on skates, please stay! Look at this team, don't you want to be part of this? Matt Martin, there were times where you could just give him a shovel and it would be the same result on the ice, but he really grew on me. He could have had two goals in game five and six. Roman Polak and Matt Hunwick, boy, we had our growing pains with them, but they really proved their worth down the stretch and heading into the playoffs. Matt Hunwick, I thought, was excellent. And poor Polak, he may have played his last game with the Leafs. Nikita Zaitsev performing valiantly as a rookie in not just the NHL, but North American hockey. Morgan Riley, what a trying season for this guy, but he saved Saved his best hockey for the end of the season and I still think he's only gonna get better. Jake Gardner, we know the deal with him. He's frustrating at times, but it's a fraction of the time and we know that he's one of the better young defensemen in this entire league. Connor Carrick, thank you very much. He is gonna be a defender in this league for years to come. The myriad of younger players and fourth liners who found themselves injured at some point, Nikita Soshnikov, Josh Levo, Eric Fair. No idea how those guys are gonna fare this summer. Ha, <laughs> Fair, Eric Fair. Don't know where they're gonna end up but they all perform valiantly. These are all players for the Leafs, man. How we started with Enroth and then Bebo somehow and then McElhaney and people concerned about McElhaney and then McElhaney plays great. What a hurricane at the backup position. God, it was just such a good season. <laughs> it was such a good season! I like the Blue Jays and I got to go to some Blue Jays playoff games and every time I was there, I was like, this is great and I wish it was for the Leafs. I love the Raptors, and I got to check out all the action at Jurassic Park, and I was like, this is great, and I can't wait till it's for the Leafs. This season, starting with the first overall pick with a new logo, new everything for the Centennial, everything went as good as it could have. Brendan Shanahan and the whole management group not repeating the mistakes of the past, and they went young. The Centennial season marketing campaign, the stand witness, the 100 going back to one thing when they realized that the team was getting better, it was all brilliant and masterful and something that previous organizations in my lifetime have not come close to at all. If you didn't go to a game this season, go! 
It's not the same. The production, the giveaways, the craziness, everything is better. And to Capitals fans, a sincere thank you. Ew. The vast majority of you, and there was a few bad ones, don't point them out. You know there's always going to be some bad ones. The vast majority of you were just the best. The epitome of class. Even the Twitter account with that nice send off at the end, it was beautiful. Now I saw a few Caps fans shocked to see Washington Capitals fans in Maple Leaf Square and those fans were highlighted. Let me tell you, that's not surprising. And it's also part of the reason why I'm so proud of this season. I mean, there might be some expats in this city, that's entirely possible, but the reason there are so many Capitals fans and Penguins fans and some Ducks fans and a bunch of fans of other teams in this city is you don't understand. The Leafs sucked! For a very long time! The 2004 playoff run was 13 years ago. The 2002 playoff run, the last time they really, really had a shot, made it to the third round, was 15 years ago. 2013 ended miserably, and it was a fluke that they even got there in the first place. There is a huge sect of hockey fans in this city who should be Leaf fans and aren't because the Leafs sucked for the duration of these people's lives. So Ovechkin, extremely exciting player, extremely exciting team, yeah, they're gonna latch on. Which is why acknowledging the Leafs passed so early in the season, but then really putting some closure on it, moving forward was the right thing to do for the Leafs. The past, it's back there. It's gone now. It's all about moving forward, and I think a lot of other fans, a lot of Leafs fans, expected baby steps. And what they got was Leafs and Bounds. You see, because, um, that's terrible. So anyway, Capitals fans in Washington and the Washington area, thank you. You were excellent. Washington fans in Toronto, I don't blame you but I think you'll see the light eventually. And when you're ready to return to your rightful place, we're gonna make fun of you a little bit, but then we will welcome you with open arms. And whether you're with us or against us, it doesn't matter because either way, you will stand witness. And this is the part where I drag the last video of the season out as long as possible because I never wanna finish the last video of the season. And I always have to remind myself, this isn't the last video of the season, you're gonna continue making videos, you stupid idiot, but it doesn't make me any less sad. All of you, if this is your first video of the season, if you've never even listened to the podcast, if you're an avid podcast listener, if you've, watched uh, any of these videos once, thank you so much. When I started these videos 10 years ago, I was really obsessed with the numbers at first and and uh, it's like it's an infectious thing. You get a couple dozen, you get a few hundred and you think you're freaking famous. <laughs> but behind every number is a person and what was really fun about Maple Leaf Square is I got to see all that. You guys are the best damn fans ever. Dangle navy signs, ridiculous signs with my freaking face on them. Just shaking hands, taking selfies, or even if you just said hi once, it means a lot to me. And it's taken a lot of time over the years. It doesn't stop being weird. Like, it's it's strange when someone recognizes you and you've never met them. And I love it. And for 10 years, I've loved it. And I'm hoping to love it for way more. You've all helped build this, whatever this is, and I can't thank you enough. And if I ever get the chance to send you all a million dollars individually, I will do it. Million dollars Canadian, though, so if you're not Canadian, I'm sorry. If you are one of the people, even just one of the times, who have watched my videos from one of the 141 countries that my videos have been watched in ever, thank you. And if you think for one second I would have ever talked about the Leafs of the last 10 years for the last 10 years without you, uh, you're wrong. I would never have talked about the team the Leafs of Ice for the last 10 years without your support. I've had people say, oh man, your videos are like my therapy. How about your mine? 10 years ago I made the decision that yelling at a camera on YouTube was less expensive, and so thank you. Ah, uh, this is going on for too long, and I have some surprises for you that I want to show you later too. So I think I'll cut the video off here. We'll probably expand a little bit more on the podcast, which is coming out tomorrow. So thank you. So that is it for this one. That is it for these playoffs. That is it for this season. And that is it for the first 10 years of Leafs fan reaction. There, now you don't have to ask what LFR stands for. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends. They're probably going to call you weird, but whatever. Who needs them anyway? And guess what? Austin Matthews is a Leaf. William Nylander is a Leaf. Mitch Marner is a Leaf. The Leafs! are the Leafs! So for everyone who's yucking it up this morning, get your licks in now! I encourage you, get your licks in now, because you are not gonna have many more opportunities! I said it in the first video of the season, and I'll say it in the last. Frogs and locusts! Full biblical! It's coming! Pain is coming. 
and it's finally the rest of the league's turn. Hey, did you see the Leafs game last night? Okay, boys and girls, let's review. How many goals did the Leafs score in the Big Apple? One. Two. Four. I, I can't fit that many. Oh, you Brian McCabe allowed. All eyes are on Sundin's groin. You know how many people that headline has to pass through before it gets pressed? This video is not about a man, but the legend, Matt Sundin. He is awesome, and nobody can tell me anything different. Program from the NHL Awards? We weren't really supposed to get these autographs, but that's, uh... Kelly Rudy and Scott Oak. I'm excited as I've finally hit 3,000 YouTube subscribers. What? Who cares about you? I'm excited because the Leafs won their first rookie tournament game, baby. They're going to win the cup. Let's just start planning the parade now. Oh, well, guys, I've had this idea for a video for a really long time, but I never thought it would get this bad. But unfortunately, they're starting the season 0-6-1. I think it's time. Show. Sure, it sucks that the computer upstairs is broken, but I got a gong in the basement. Better get used to using that gong, buddy, because the Leafs suck. Dude, you're like the biggest Leafs fan ever. What are you doing? Not anymore, I'm not. So what, you're jumping ship? You don't even know what team you're supporting. You have a Flames hat and a Caps jersey. That's right, baby, the Calgington Flapitals. They're going all the way! Well, la ladies and gentlemen, Paul Maurice's reaction to being fired. Uh, you, yeah. So, Paul, um, we understand last season was a, was a difficult one for you. Uh, you missed the playoffs for, uh third consecutive year, second consecutive for you. Uh, what are your thoughts on getting fired today? Uh, it was a rough season. You know what? I did my best, okay? Andrew Raycroft fell asleep on the bench how many times? Oh my god! And Kabina couldn't stop the buck to save his life! Leafs win 3-2 to two in overtime. Go figure. That's been the trend lately against the New York Islanders. And as I said in the pregame show on Leafs TV... I was on TV. No big deal. Four games remaining and still not out of the playoffs. Swah! Leafs win 4-3 to three in the shootout over the Boston Bruins. And I was in attendance for my first ever Leaf road game. Are you excited for the season? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Team's looking pretty, pretty good. Okay, are you bringing that thing back again? Yeah. Good to know. Okay, I'll see you later. And I feel like the Leafs are going to be blessed with good luck this season. Why? Last night while I was sleeping, this World Juniors picture fell off the wall and broke on my head. David Stax! I just watched Stax! <laughs> Holy crap! Jonathan Bernier! Your beard sucked anyway. <laughs> After nine long years. He's gonna say it! Mother playoffs, baby! Ah! Dude, the last time the Leafs made the playoffs, YouTube didn't exist. Dude, the last time the Leafs made the playoffs, Paul Martin was Prime Minister. And now he plays for the Penguins! Thank you very much, appreciate it. Pleasure, thanks. Actually, you wanna play? No. Okay. <laughs> Suit up. Change Rider. More than meets the eye. <laughs> Ready to shoot your first LFR at the cottage? Mason Raymond's sick. I'll take that as a yes. Turn down for what? Dun, 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 dun. for this one thank you very much for watching click like if you like this video click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends and that's the bottom line because stone cold said so spatins i mean leafs lay down your playoff hopes
Wachowski. Lani Bohalas. Bruins! Come and get them! Now some of y'all might have heard rumors about the trade deadline happening soon. Well, we'll be leaving a little earlier. We're gonna get dropped into Quebec, dressed as a hockey team. And once we're in enemy territory, as a puck whacking guerrilla army, we're gonna be doing one thing and one thing only. Losing hockey games. Dun 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 You know what guys? I love him and he's the best player in franchise history, but can you imagine what the Leafs are gonna get from Mets and Dean when they trade him? You know what? After that, they're gonna start winning games. <laughs> Oh, 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 It's me, Steve. Have you seen Blue, my puppy? Hi, I'm Nazem Kadri Bob Ross, and today we're going to be drawing a roughing penalty. Make them all angry, probably chirp them, you know, give them, give them some sick chirps and stuff. Jingle Pop! Austin Matthews, Austin Matthews, Austin Matthews! Why are you laughing? <laughs> Why are you laughing? You're not even happy. I don't like that you're laughing and you're not even happy. Because you might as well laugh, you might as well joke, you might as well yuck it up for as long as you can! As for years to come, shots from Riley and Nylander and Martyr and Matthews rain down on you like frogs and locusts! No more of the Leafs being the laughing stock. No more of the Leafs being that cute, oh I just pity them so much I almost cheer for them team. The Leafs don't need your pity, they're about to go full biblical! So congratulations are due to you, you beat Austin Matthews and the Toronto Maple Leafs on the opening night of this season. And I can't wait to watch you try to beat Austin Matthews and the Toronto Maple Leafs for the next generation to come.